And so even though I think we'll get to 40 gig and 100 gig at the exist, with the existing uh, infrastructure for uh, dense wave division, uh, the new, new infrastructure will be required to get to terabit, and that should be great good news for you all. It's going to be fun. You can invent new stuff, new fibers, new lasers, new, you know, everything. Uh, but here's some reasons why that's good news. One is the existing infrastructure is, go is filling up. You double traffic every year, and pretty soon you got serious traffic. So all that dark fiber really is filling up, and pretty soon you're going to have to be running new fibers, and they'll... Uh, so uh, investment protection will not dominate purchase decisions. Uh, these new technologies likely to arrive will be better than the old ones. That is, I think we're hitting marginal returns in trying to drive deeper into this 1,500 nanometer infrastructure that we have, and that there'll be much bigger opportunities in new technologies, new fibers, maybe with vacuum cores, carbon fibers. I have a hunch carbon fibers might be better than silicon fibers. I don't know. How about no fibers? How about take the mesh free space optical? How about, as you just said, no OEL, but OOO, uh, moving things along? So when will this all happen? That's actually the hardest question on the table today. When will terabit Ethernet arrive? There are some people who, if you do Google, as I do every seven times a day, if you do Google, you'll find that terabit Ethernet has been here for some time, and of course that's a matter of semantics. Then there are some people who think it will happen sooner, like Ray Kurzweil believes in, in his book, uh, The Singularity is Near, we're all on these exponentials and everything is happening at an accelerating rate, so however long it took us to go from 10 to 100, it's going to take less to go from 100 to 1,000 gigabits. Then there are some people who say terabit is going to happen later, these are the um, bubble-phobic pundits who are afraid to be enthusiastic and um, perhaps extravagant in predictions. Certain vendors will be slow, and then, um, who knows, well, maybe the carriers would prefer it happen later. And then there are people who say it will never happen. I asked Sean Maloney, who's the head of sales and marketing at Intel, when do you think Terabit Ethernet will arrive? And he said, never. That was kind of a strange answer, requiring, and I harken back to that memo that I read. It, maybe I should ask him what he meant. And what he meant was never on the volume platform. What he meant was wireless has taken over the last meter, the last hundred meters. So what he meant was terabit Ethernet. You won't actually run a terabit Ethernet fiber into your cell phone. That there, there are wireless solutions. And of course, the one he's promoting is WiMAX, which he promises. Um, to save the day this year, if not next. So now going back to the chaos surrounding the arrival of Terabit uh, Ethernet, uh, I have a remedy to propose. Now recall my admiration for the layering structure of the Internet and how well that has worked. It's worked really well when you think about it. Uh, Ethernet was invented in 1973. The World Wide Web, which, as you may know, runs on the Ethernet, was invented in 1989. So those layers worked. This layer managed to be of service to this layer, and they were developed at completely different times. Isn't that something? It's also true that Tim Berners-Lee, when he did the web, didn't imagine Google would happen. And there's a, you know, Ethernet, Internet, Web, Google. Those layerings really work well. Um, so that's the remedy. That's the remedy for dealing with the chaos getting to terabit. Uh, so maybe it remains to be seen whether OC768 is the last summit. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say OC768 40 gig is the last summit, and that means we'll never hear the word OC3072, which would be the next step. <laughs> is anyone selling OC3072 yet? Well, I could be wrong, but let's, let's be alert to whether there ever is an OC3072. So let's say Ethernet 1, and we're now going to 40 gig E, 100 gig E, terabit E. Uh, Ethernet has a problem. First of all, we're facing what you all call impairments that we have never faced before. I mean, I could launch a pulse down a piece of coax for a mile. I don't stand a chance of launching an optical pulse 
3,000 kilometers down one lambda of I don't stand a chance. So Ethernet has to confront the fact that dense wave division multiplexing is inherently a harder problem. So um, the smart Alex in the Ethernet world have a comeuppance ahead. But something else has changed also. The traffic has changed. As I mentioned, voice, video, and data, television, telephone, and internet have all converged or are converging. Uh, Ethernet was not designed to carry video. So video has very high speeds at long distances, requires quality of service, and, and maybe you're not noticing, but it also requires latency. There, there's different kinds of video, not just television. Television has no latency problem. You know, you lose a, an hour, you don't miss that much. So you can download video, which requires capacity. You can stream video, which requires quality of service, or you can do interactive video, which requires low latency. So Ethernet has to, is now as it's confronted, as it's taking over the dense wave division, I mean, maybe it isn't, but it sounds like it's taking over dense wave division, it has to figure out how to do these high speeds with high QoS and low latency, and Ethernet has not been good at that in the past. So what we need now is to re-architect the internet. And there is an effort at the National Science Foundation on that right now to, uh, called Genie. You know, well, what would a new internet look like? So what we need, especially down here at levels one, two, is we need some revision of the layer structure here. Some, and, uh, and after we have it, we then need to be disciplined in being sure we get multi-vendor interoperability at this layer. And this re-architecture would look something like this. There's circuits, and there's packets, and there's lambdas. And there's routing, and there's switching. And routing tends to be dynamic and more responsive to individual customer transient needs. And switching tends to be uh, pre-computed routes and dedicated bandwidth uh, in the service of traffic engineering. So we need a new re-virtualization of this space which routes and switches in the proper balance the combinations of circuits and packets and lambdas. And then once we have such a re-architecting of the low levels of the internet, then we need discipline around that architecture. And if we do, if we succeed in that re-architecting of these lower levels, uh, we will accelerate technological innovation. We will be able to absorb transient proprietary implementations which are necessary but they should be transient and they should be absorbed. Like how many lambdas are you going to use to get 100 gig or terabit? That decision, how many lambdas you're going to use, how many lanes, needn't be visible to whether you're doing e-commerce or VoIP or video. So let's find a way to absorb all those differences rather than have them peak out. And if we do this, we will have interoperability, fierce competition, and investment protection. <laughs>